Satsian UI is an amazing component library, but if your app is starting to look exactly the same like many other apps out there, here's exactly why. It's not because Shatsian is bad. It's really not. It's because you're probably using it the wrong way. And honestly, we've seen this pattern before. It happened with Bootstrap, that you could instantly spot a Bootstrap site. Then it happened with Tailwind. Even today, a lot of sites look exactly like Tailwind. Now, Shatsian is meant to be different. It's meant to be customizable. It's meant to help you build your own design system. And yet, a lot of Shatsian apps end up looking exactly the same. After seeing this pattern repeatedly, I've come to realize that there are a few common mistakes that, that a lot of you are making. In case you're wondering, yes, I did take a look at the latest Shatsian UI update and these mistakes are still applicable because they're not just about features or tools, but they're something more fundamental. So if you want your Shatsian UI app to look beautiful and not boring, then keep watching. Hey, my name is Ankita. I teach concepts around web development, AI, and SaaS. By building real projects, and focusing on practical decisions that truly matter in production. I'm also creating a video every single day until Christmas. If there is a topic that you're interested in, then definitely comment below and let me know. I may create a video on that. So let's dive in. The real mistake isn't the lack of customization, it's delayed customization. Your app has started to look generic because you did not think about customizing it at all. Now, for example, the latest update of Shatsi and UI is amazing. It exactly fixes this problem. A lot of the Shatsi and UI applications end up looking the same. So with the latest update, you could simply create a new project. And then here, you could build your own Shatsi and UI. You could pick a specific preset that immediately changes what component library you're going to use, what style you're going to use, base color, theme, icon libraries, fonts, and so on. Now this is intentionally done so you could tweak the Shatsi and UI component library in your projects because the challenge is that a lot of developers just go with the defaults and never change. As a result, our apps are looking very Shatsi and Now again, Shatsi and is a beautiful component library so your basic applications are also going to look pretty good from the get-go. However, if you want to stand out, you want to create some sort of a brand, going with the defaults isn't going to cut it, which is why this specific update really helps. However, that's not all though. Here again, you're picking the same de some defaults. We're picking the component library, we're picking some style, icon library, radius, menu color, and so on. However, the problem still remains the same. Slowly, people are just going to adopt these common customizations and suddenly your app is going to look exactly the same just like many other apps. So what are you going to do then? Well, the minute you decide what theme you want, colors you want, and so on. So once you set these defaults, make sure you assess your entire application and exactly how you want to customize it. Instead of waiting later and like, maybe I'll customize it later or pushing the decisions to tomorrow, decide right now how exactly your, your app should look like. For example, take how you, how you want your borders to look like, what colors you want to go for, what theme, overall theme of your application should be, the fonts in your application, how would the different headings look like, and so on. The way Shatsi and UI works is that once you basically pick whatever theme you want, it's going to add this to the URL. You can just press create project, and now you can simply create a project with a specific preset. Now, I have gone ahead and created a project with a specific preset, for example. And if you go to globals.css, and this is a Next.js project, now it has created all these different CSS variables with different colors here automatically because I chose lime as a color. A lot of developers make a mistake that they don't change these values at all. So the key thing here is decide early. Don't wait to theme later. Decide early on what the overall theme of your application is going to look like, be it icons, colors, border radius, and spacing, spacing between elements, and so on. All of these truly matter. Now, I cannot believe that this is something that a lot of developers do. They end up copy-pasting the components with the Shatsi and create command or Shatsi and add command to add the components. And after that, they forget about it. They don't update it. Even if there might be a latest update in the Shatsi and component ecosystem, they have no idea about it. So you need to treat chats and components as your source code, not just simply snippets. You could use this command npx chat cn at latest add all override to override all the components 
and update them and grab the latest from chat CN registry. And this is a very handy command and it's the best way you can update them. You don't need to copy paste them every single time. That's very tedious. And in case you just want to update one component, not all of them, then you could simply just do chat CN latest add card hyphen hyphen override. And as you do, it's only going to update that specific component. As you can see, these are the changes here in the background. And I'm saving it because ChatCN uses double quotes and I use single quotes. And my editor automatically formatted it. But now you can already see the types have changed. It's no longer an H3. It is in fact a div. Similarly, it's no longer a P tag. It's in fact a div. And the obviously, based on the semantics of your application, this could vary. So if you want to still keep it as a P, you could do so. But at least you know that's a documented change and that's how you want to build your application. That's how you want to build your car. And this is the biggest one. Many people customize ShatCN by adding random class name everywhere. Let's say you want a different variant of a button and the default variants that ShatCN UI gives you is not available. Now instead what they would do is go here, type equals button. And now add a class name W full, change the BG color to be amber all of a sudden and so on. Now this is a huge problem because now you're creating these one-off components. And if you want your primary button to change, then change it globally. Don't just create these one-off changes. And if you think that you need a brand new variant, instead of adding a class name and overriding it like this, go to button. There are all these variants that are displayed here. There's a default variant, secondary destructive and a link. And if you want some other variant like custom, although custom is not a good name, let's say a tertiary variant, then you could just simply add that and create a different background here or whatever you want to provide. And then once you add this, pick that as a variant here, because now this will be available for you and you could use it globally everywhere versus these one-off changes, because that's not a design system, that's exceptions that you're creating. Real customizations do happen globally. And spacing scale, typography rhythm, different variants add to that specific design system. If every screen needs a one-off fix, we don't have a system, it's going to be super chaotic and your app is going to start to look ugly or different. So most app looks the same because they breathe the same. And exactly why if you want to stick to a specific way you want to design it, do it globally as well. Now, the new Shad CN flow absolutely helps. And you can create a project, you can have different customization. It does remove a ton of friction. But if you stop there, your app is still gonna look very familiar. The fix is in more customization. It's intentional imbalance. So you could, for example, pick spacing, typography, and even how users interact with your application and push it harder than the defaults. That's how your application is gonna stop feeling more shad any. And the most underrated technique is the density and spacing. Most shad and UI have the same padding, same card spacing, the same rhythm. They literally breathe the same way. So instead of tweaking components later, decide early, is this app going to be compact or it's in fact going to be more spacious, for example. And then accordingly adjust your spacing scale globally. Make this more tighter, make layouts more denser, or intentionally make everything more airy, for example. And when it comes to typography, it's not just about the font choice. Yes, most you can change the font choice and font choice will allow you to make the app look a lot different because fonts are incredibly important. However, it's not just about the fonts. If you want your UI to look different, you have to increase the contrast between headings, the labels, be intentional about the line height and the tracking in your application. Changing the font is not gonna just simply change the hierarchy because it's gonna be cosmetic. Now, another thing is how a user interacts with the application. And this is something that no one touches it because the Shatsi and defaults are quite polite. They have like subtle hover states, for example, as you can see here, the safe transitions. That's fine if you want everything to look familiar, but two apps can look identical until you interact with them. So you could make your interactions more snappier, for example. So interactions could be something you could 
handle so you could make them more snappier you could have stronger hover states so you could have like more of a bump as you can see the hover states of my two buttons for my modern full stack next yes course i have in fact tweaked the shadow here and so on so it doesn't look like a shatsi and ui application even though i am using shatsi and ui component library but you could also make more de deliberate motion decisions, for example, as you can see how the app flows from section to section. It completely changes how our app feels without changing the layout at all. And that's where also this flow can actually fit in. So Chatsy and UI component library gets you 80% of the way there by forcing early decisions around fonts, radius, spacing, and theme. That part is great, but the last 20%, the part that you that will make your app unique is exactly how you tweak these defaults as well. So if you keep tweaking these defaults, that's exactly how your Shatsian app stops to look like very Shatsian-y. And it also stops to look super boring. It is more inventional and it is more snappy as you can see here with these cards too. If you take a look, this is a card component from Shatsian UI for instance, but the interaction here is making it look more snappier than before. Now, Shatsian won't exactly save your UIs. It will only expose how you make your decisions. It will give you strong defaults, so you get 80% of the way there. But if you want to avoid looking like generic sites, like Bootstrap or classic Tailwind CSS, then you should truly customize it and use some of the tips that I have explained in the specific video. Now, if this was useful, I'm posting a video every day until Christmas. So make sure to subscribe, hit the like button and comment below and let me know or what type of content I should create next. Now, having said that as next steps, if you are interested in leveling up your Next.js skills, then definitely check out the specific Next.js 16 crash course. It's a five hour long course that teaches you by building. This has the theme on this specific YouTube channel where we go through building a app like Product Hunt. And I also teach you all the things you need to know about Next.js. Definitely check that out if you're interested. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.